Hey everybody, hope you're having a good Monday morning so far. It's Travis Van Cleef speaking here from iDesign Solutions. Uh, what I wanted to take a look at today was a great little hack or time-saving tip, I guess you could call it, um, a filter selection. And we're going to make some groups today. And we're also going to take a look at displaced views. So we're going to try and get this done in 10 minutes because I don't want to put anybody to sleep here. So what you're looking at here is just a simple model that I've got started here in Revit. And there's a couple things that I want to show you here. I've got these model lines here that I'm not going to want to see in this view, especially if I'm doing a render. So let's take a quick look at visibility graphics. If you have something in your model that you need, but you don't want it in a specific view, what you can do is come to the visibility graphics category here in your properties browser and click on edit. So because of these components of the, of the file, they're actually considered a model category. We're going to find them here in the model categories tab. So if we scroll down, what we're looking for is lines. These lines we just use to create some of the geometry for the rest of the model, but um, I don't want to see them in this 3D view. So what I'm going to do is just uncheck lines and you'll notice that when I hit apply, we'll see those lines disappear. So that's great. Now let's move on to the next thing. What I wanted to do was show a displaced view of a vestibule that's hidden inside here. You can kind of see it at the bottom. So it's a vestibule that comes up from this terrace, up through the exposed floor inside the building. And if I just rotate that to a elevation view, you can see that it comes right up to this roof. So we're going to be grabbing this and making a group out of it. And what I want to do is grab this front curtain wall as well. So here's how I'm going to go about doing that. I'm going to use my view cube to come to a top orthographic view. And I'm just going to change my visual style here to wireframe. So now I can get a good idea as to what I'm selecting here and I'm seeing right through all the levels of my model and I know that because I'm in a 3D view not a plan view so what I'm going to do here is just create a crossing selection all the way around all of this stuff because I know if I make it around the entire wall I'm going to get all the curtain wall panels um, the grid lines so what I'm doing here is I'm coming up to filter and when I click on the filter button everything that I've selected is listed here by category. So the one thing that I don't want in this selection is these columns. So if I uncheck that, I look to see here that I've got everything else that I want. Excellent. I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm just going to come up here to where it says create group. And I'm going to call this curtain wall. I don't like it when I do that. So I'm going to take my cap lock off and change the name. I'll hit OK. And it says it's already in use. Enter unique name. OK, so I've already done this. Let's call it Curtain Wall 2. OK, so now I have this group. And when I select it, it's showing that I have everything selected. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing over here with this vestibule. And let's just filter that out just in case. Uh, looks like I have everything that I want here as well. So we'll say OK and I call them make that group as well. Now the reason why I'm making the groups is to make it easier for me to create my displaced view. So I'm going to call this one best view. Okay. And now I can come back to an isometric view. I want to use an isometric view for this. So I'm going to place it essentially how I want to see this, maybe a little bit more of the model showing. And I'm going to come back to shaded. So if I want to see um, this vestibule inside and this pulled apart, what we can do is what's called a displaced view. So this is a new functionality for Revit 2014. You may have seen it in um, Inventor, if you're an Inventor user, but um, seeing it in Revit, this is going to be the first time. So first things first, I'm going to grab this roof and I'm going to move it away so we can see that vestibule inside. So once that's selected, if you come up to the view 
panel here, you'll see this little icon here, displays elements. So when I click on that, it gives me this nice local coordinate system that I can use to push back. So just grabbing one axis, I'm going to move that out of the way. And then I'm going to grab this group here and do the same thing. But you'll notice this time, when I click on the Displace Elements tool, it's not doing what I, what I would like it to. So I'm just going to ungroup that quick, but my selection set stays the same. And now if I hit the Displace Elements, I can pull this off to the front. Okay. Now the same thing goes with my vestibule. Now that it's ungrouped, I click on my Displace Elements, and now I can pull this up as well. So just to show uh, a little bit better as to how this all comes together, you can grab your element and click on Path, and then click on a couple areas that you want that will give you an idea as to um, basically where it's going to go. So I just clicked on that bottom edge, and these lines are showing me that this is the final resting spot of this element. So I can do the same here. Um, maybe I'll just do one of these on each each side, and this will give us a, a better understanding understanding and clarity for this view. And the last one I want to do is my vestibule. Let's see if we can grab that other one. There we go. Okay, so now, once you have your, your view set up the way you want it, 3D views also allow for the functionality of annotation now. So to annotate a 3D view, however, what you're going to have to do is lock it, because if the 3D view itself is not locked, then you can move that view around, and then your annotations aren't going to be really relative. They won't make sense. So to lock the view, we come down here to this view, so it looks very similar to this icon up at the top to access your 3D view. If you come down to the, the view tools at the bottom, you'll see this unlocked 3D view tool. I'm just going to click on that quick, and it says save orientation and lock view. So we'll call this displaced. We'll call it displaced one. I hit OK. And now I can come up to my text features in the annotation tab. And let's just make a quick note here. That's not what we want here. Maybe we want something a little bit smaller in scale. So let me choose a sixteenth of an inch. I'll reset my view here. I'll come back to text. And oh, it's giving me the, the arrow first. That's okay. So let's just use that arrow. And I'm going to type in. Uh, curtain wall, best of you. Okay, and so there's some other additional text tools that you can use. Once your text is in place, you can modify the elbow a little bit. You can change the text to have a box or a border. Um, if you wanted, you could take the arrow away, but we want to keep that arrow in there. Um, so just so you know, if you want to change some of your text and annotations here, you could come up into the properties of it and and change that text and if you wanted to click on edit type you could do um, you could change the background so that it's not opaque it's transparent um, you can change your your arrow styles and the borders anything essentially that's associated with with the, the text itself so once that's all said and done and you've got your view saved how you like it you can also um, modify your crop regions as well so now that you have the view set you know what you're you're wanting to illustrate it's best to crop out the rest that's not needed and then you can zoom all in there so now we've got that view all complete let's just trim a little bit more of that off we can come down to a sheet. We've got this unnamed sheet here. And we can pull that new view, this displaced one, into our document set. 
and there you have it. So, you know, this might not be something that um, they're going to build from, but it gives maybe your client or anybody that you're communicating with a good idea as to what you're trying to achieve with the assembly of the building. So that's displaced views and a couple other tips and tricks in Revit 2014. Hope you enjoyed and hope you learned a little bit. This is Travis speaking and we're signing out. Bye now.